The seven star Feraligator Terror Raid event is now back for its final time out in Scarlet and Violet. In today's video, we're going to go through the fastest and most effective builds to help you easily take this Terror Raid down when this event is running. Seven star Feraligator is running from the 8th until the 10th of November for its second and final time out in the games, giving you the opportunity if you missed it the first time to grab it while it's available. So the first build that we're featuring in today's video is going to be good old Iron Hands. Hopefully it's one that you already have built in game is going to have a fighting terror type the most important thing the held item is the scope lens of course it is level 100 and we have hyper trained it in montenevira making sure all those ivs are set to 31. the move set is going to be iron defense belly drum focus energy and drain punch just make sure that you do pp max at drain punch in case anything goes wrong in the raid and the EV spread is going to be 252 EVs in attack and in defense with the remaining put into HP with an adamant nature. So it should look like this once you've put it together in game. In zero, we're going to see the Feraligator go for that Swords Dance, boosting its attack by two stages. If you've got an Intimidator on your side of the field, it is going to help. Turn one for us. We're going to lock in with an Iron Defense. That's so just going to boost our defenses by two stages, making sure that we can take these attacks from the Feraligator a little bit better for the initial part of this raid. So we get that plus two defense up. Then the next turn, we're going to lock in with a focus energy. You can see that our Terror Orb charge has been stolen, but we'll ignore that. And we're going to just have to take an extra turn anyway. You can see the benefit of that Iron Defense coming out, making the Psychic Fang not really a problem at all. We get that focus energy off. That's going to boost our critical hit rates. Turn three, we're going to go for a Drain Punch. And that's going to guarantee pretty much with the scope lens a critical hit every time we land it. And that's going to chase down to the point of us being able to terrestrialize as well as get that mark on the Feraligator where it is going to reset our stats and our abilities on our side of the field. After that point, we're going to be free to go for a belly drum. So we're just going to keep firing these drain punches off for the next few turns as we take a bit of damage, but not much because of that Intimidate from the Star Raptor. And of course, that Iron Defense. And you can see already how quick the Iron Hands is with these critical hits. And this setup as well, this initial part, is probably the slowest part of the raid. But once it starts going, it is going to get going very quickly. And you can see it does nullify the stats and abilities on our side of the field. That's what we're looking out for. It's going to set the shield up at the same time. And what we're going to do is just fire off another Drain Punch here. It's not going to do as much damage behind the shield. Of course, there is the bonus freeze that we do get there as well. Uh, but we really want to be terrestrializing before we go for that belly drum. So we just want to make sure that we are trying to get to the point where we can terrestrialize. As soon as we can do that, we can go for that belly drum. Just bear in mind that our defense boost that we got from the iron defense has been taken away at this stage. But because of the intimidate that we have with the Star Raptor, it is going to have that minus attack still. So that is helping us out massively as well as the freeze. But you might not get as lucky as I have been with the RNG, but you might uh, sometimes when you're coming in to the Feraligator. So we'll terrestrialize and we'll go for that Belly Drum. Of course, the cost of the Belly Drum boosting our attack to plus six is going to take half of our health away, but that's fine at the moment because we are going to be now able to go for that Drain Punch boosted plus six, take a Psychic Fire for our trouble, of course, but you're going to be able to see the damage that we're going to be able to do and cut through this Feraligator very, very quickly. I would suggest that this is probably the quickest way to run through the Feraligator most consistent. You've got an Iron Hands in your game, you want to farm for Herba Mystica over this weekend, this is the way to do it for sure. It's very quick. Obviously, we have covered other builds on the channel. We covered the Clefable. Not the quickest, but a consistent way to beat it. Cried on as well, pretty consistent, but I say head and shoulders above everything else is going to be this Iron Hands. We're going to see that obligatory earthquake come out from the Feraligator here but not really going to affect us too much because we've lost that electric typing of course and then just going to lock in with the drain punch you're going to be very quick to end this raid after this even if psychic fangs does come out and do significant damage to us the drain punch is going to be enough to break the shield this time and maybe no not quite enough to take the raid down but one more after this will be enough but you can see how powerful how potent the skull Lens, the Focus Energy, the Belly Drum is on the Iron Hands. And we've had success with it against 7-star Terror Raids in the past, of course. And it is proving to be a good choice coming into this one once again this weekend. So one I would definitely recommend if you're wanting to farm this event for the high-cost items, Herba Mystica, and all of those good things. Or if you just want to catch it, if you missed it the first time out, this is the second time. The last time the Feraligator will be out in Skull and Violet. So giving you the opportunity to get this mightiest mark Pokemon, you can catch it in whatever Pokeball you like. 
and it is as easy as that you're going to do it in a matter of minutes so farming it is going to be very very easy so you can see you'll be able to catch it and then get the item drops we get two ability patches that's very good i don't mind that if we're not getting her with mystica that's a good replacement so if you want to respawn the den come into your home menu then down into system settings down into system then into date and time make sure your synchronized clock via the internet is off and come into the date and time options toggle through these hit ok Come back into your home menu and back into the game and you see all your dens will respawn and the seven star terror raid event will appear once again on your map allowing you to locate it and farm away and another build that we're featuring in today's video is gonna be azumarill another very quick and effective way to take down for alligator while this event is running gonna be level 100 hyper trained of course the item is the shell bell and make sure that it's terror typing is fairy the move set that it's got is going to be mud slap a belly drum defense curl and play rough and the ev spread on the azumarill is going to be 252 evs in attack and 252 in defense with an adamant nature the remaining evs just put into hp the big important thing the ability here huge power make sure it does have that so your azumarill should look like this going into the raid make sure you do pp max the play rough just in case anything goes wrong and I'll show you how easy it can be to take down this for alligator. So turn one, we're just going to lock in with a mud slap because our primary goal early on in this raid is going to be chasing down our terrestrialization. We know after the first turn, it's going to steal some of our terror orb charge. So it's going to mean that we have to take an extra turn to attack before we can terrestrialize. So that's the big thing here that we're wanting to look out for. The mud slap is going to reduce the accuracy on the Froligate every time we use it. So it's going to mean that the Froligate is less likely to hit those attacks, which is going to mean we have the room after that to be able to get that belly drum off, which is going to be quite key for us in this raid, of course. Turn two, we go for that mud slap once again. But as I said, just this early stage, we're just chasing down our terrestrialization. And you can already see the accuracy drops coming into play here as that ice punch does miss. We are going to get another mud slap off. And after this next one, that's going to be the point where we are going to be able to terrestrialize. And that's going to be us able to potentially start setting up in this raid but the big key factor that we're looking out for of course like normal is when the Froligator drops our stats nullifies our stats and abilities on our side of the field after that point it freezes up to start setting up to close things up in this raid so we're not in a bad position right now as you can see we can terrestrialize once you can terrestrialize i would definitely suggest doing that but before we lock in with the belly drum we want to try and recover some health so we'll lock in with a player rough that's going to do some significant damage to the frolicate and nothing outstanding or anything like that but enough to give us a bit of health recovery as well as put us in a position where we're going to be able to get that stats nullified and abilities nullified on our side of the field so after that we are going to be able to belly drum you can see another ice punch miss here if the rng is kind to you throughout the raid after you've got those mud slaps up it should be everything falling into your favor with those accuracy drops it shouldn't really be landing too many moves. And obviously, nice bonus about player rough as well. It does drop the attack stat on the for alligator, which helps out massively. And this is what we're looking out for. Nullify stat changes and abilities on our side of the field. This frees us up to start setting up the shield going up, of course, after that. But that is going to be fine because we're going to be in a good position. The raid timer in a healthy position as well. Turn after the shield goes up and our stats have been nullified. We're going to lock in with a defense kill. So that is going to give us a defense boost. In the, if it does land those attacks through the accuracy drops we're going to be able to take those a lot better turn after that we're going to set up a belly drum it's going to cut our hp in half of course but the big thing that it's going to do is give us plus six in our attack stat meaning that those attacks are going to be doing massive damage cutting through the shield very quickly and we're all done from this point because now we're basically just going to lock in with the player rough every time we do land this move it is going to give us a nice chunk of recovery as well and do significant damage, super effective damage to this Froligator. And you can see doing uh, all the work that you want Azure Mill to do that we know it for. And because it is just a very, very strong option doing some nice damage there. It does negate the negative effects on its side of the field. So those accuracy drops are going to be gone. Unfortunately, those stat drops are going to be gone as well. But we are going to be able to take things a little bit better because of that defense curl. Of course, we still have that plus one in our defense stat. And like I say, all we need to do for the rest of this raid is going to be just spam that player rough. Of course, if you do have an Intimidator on your side of the field, it is going to help because it is going to cycle in and out of the field. It's going to drop those Intimidates. Just keep that Froligator in check because we don't have those accuracy drops kind of helping us out anymore. 
We don't have any of those defense drops as well that we've had from the Weavile because it's likely been firing off layers into the Fralligator. So why the player off did so much damage in the first place, you don't have that. Just expect that the damage won't be as big as our initial player off that we launched off in this. But another player off going to break the shield here. And we're still above 50% of the raid timer now. The shield is broken. One more player off will do it. So with 50% of the raid timer left, we're going to be able to close this raid up in a very, very quick way. Probably not as quick as the Iron Hands, but at the same time, it is going to be a very effective way if you don't have Iron Hands to run through this raid to farm for Herba Mystica over this weekend. And that final player off coming out going to be enough to close it up, take down this mightiest mark Pokemon. So you're able to catch it if you missed it the first time out when it was running last weekend. And uh, if you are wanting to farm Herba Mystica, this is definitely one build I would recommend to go through and use for the majority of this event and you're obviously going to get a chance to catch it and all the item drops there so hopefully you do get lucky with some herba mystica but if not then you get some ability patches or some other good high cost items that these raids do provide if you've enjoyed today's video and found the builds useful please consider dropping a like on the video it does massively help out do share around in the community help others that might be struggling with this seven star terror raid event for for alligator do leave your own builds that you've had success with down below as well. I'd love to read them. And it also helps out others who might be struggling with this raid. These two are probably the fastest ones to run through the Fraligator, especially to farm for the Cyber Mystica while this event is running. Thank you so much for tuning in, friends. Have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you all in another video very soon. So until then, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.